This is Joyce Begayski from the Native Rhythms Festival Committee. And every year I teach workshops at the Native Rhythms Festival in Melbourne, Florida. Well, this year Native Rhythms Festival is going virtual. So it's only right after many years of teaching my workshops that I do a virtual workshop. So I'm gonna kinda take advantage of this because usually my workshops are only two hours. And what I'm gonna teach you right now is a three to four day process. So you're going to be learning how to make a rawhide rattle. And I have, have it set up with different stages of completion because we don't have three or four days to videotape. So I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna turn the camera down to the table and show you the supplies that are needed and we're going to begin the process of putting together your very own rawhide rattle. Okay, here we go. So to start with, we need rawhide. And you only need a piece that's probably maybe a square foot because this isn't going to take a lot of rawhide. And here I already have a pattern drawn on to the rawhide and the spacing I punch my holes because I like to punch my holes before I sew. You can either sew with a glover's needle or you can punch your holes and use it like a cruel needle or blunt point needle. And to start with I'll show you a few rattles that I have completed. This one is a small one. It's got little beads in it. I like to stuff my rattles with beads because I don't like to waste beads. And there's always some broken beads and some misshapen beads and odd size shaped beads that you're never gonna use. So I save them for my rattles. And this one was done with this cardboard pattern. So you can see how much rawhide shrinks. Now the next one this is a four-piece rawhide rattle, and I call it my buffalo rattle. And it's got buffalo design on it, buffalo hair, and it's got a couple little bells in it. Once in a while, I like to put a bell. The third one I have here is full of beads. And this is a rawhide rattle that I made one like it for Robert Mirabal, and this was made from this cardboard pattern. And I love the sound of this one. I just, I just love it. And they're painted with acrylic paint. And then I like to go over with a light coat of polyurethane to protect the rawhide from dampness so it doesn't soften and to seal the paint. Now today we're gonna to be using a pattern like this. And this is the pattern that I drew on this rawhide. And this will be on the instructions on the website. A actual size pattern will be on the instructions. So let's get started. So I have the rawhide right here. And I have my sinew. And I like to split the sinew so it's not so thick and it goes through the holes easier. And it's already threaded onto a cruel needle, a blunt point needle and I've already punched my holes in the rawhide. I have a punch here that I use, and I punch my holes after I soak the rawhide. You can punch them before, but if you do, you're gonna dull your tools, and there's nothing worse than dull, dull tools or punches. I have my handle prepared to put in after the head is sewn together, and I have my sand here because you'll probably need about a cup, a good cup of sand. And uh, this is what you stuff your rattle with to stretch it out. And I use a funnel, and we're gonna go through all of this. So, I have my other tools here, so we're going to pull out the first head. And I'll show you how to get started with sewing this. And it's been soaking in water. It's best to soak it in water for several hours until it's nice and soft, pliable, or you can soak it overnight. So this one, we're going to put the heads together like this. Now some pieces will be bigger than others because some areas of the skin shrink or stretch more than others. 
But bottom line is, you want to line up the holes and start sewing it together. So, let's get this started. And, okay, here we go. Let's put these two sides together. Let's get them together here. All right. So we're going to start, and I want to, this is really important, so I want you to see really closely how I start this. All right, now there's holes already in here. So I'm putting the holes, I'm holding the two pieces together. See, there's two pieces here, I'm, and they're wet. See how flexible? This is rawhide, so it's very flexible when it's wet. So I've got the pieces here, I'm putting the needle through with the sinew, I'm pulling it through, and I'm going to leave a tail on this because you want to come through this several times. So we're going to go through again because you want it to stay put. You want it to stay nice and snug. So let's get this going here. All right. Okay, so we've got through, we want to go through here a few times. And it's a little slippery, so you'll need towels and stuff to dry your hands. So pull this through again. I'm going to go one more time to make it snug because you don't want this, this stitch sliding out. So we're going to go through another time. And then... I'm going to loop it through here. See, right here. I'm going to loop it through. There we go. And you snug it up. Now you want to snug it up, but you don't want to make it so tight you rip right through the rawhide. So now we're going to go around. I'm going to go through both sides of the holes. There's holes on both sides here. And it's a little slippery and a little sloppy. So just be patient. There we go. It's going through there. See how that's going through there? Both pieces. Pull it through. Pull it, pull it. Nice and snug. Okay. Nice and snug. See there? Nice and snug. Both sides. All right. So let's go to the next hole and we're going to stitch that. We'll go around a bit and now I don't tie a knot in the end of my sinew because when I've used up some of it I like to, we need to get a little more end here so and this is about two yards long the split sinew so we're going to the next one. And sometimes you kind of kind of feel around for the hole on the, the back side because it's not always completely lined up after this soaks for a while. Because like I said, some areas of rawhide are a little bit thicker than others and it'll stretch and shrink differently just as it does when it dries. Now we're going around here pretty good. We're almost up the neck. Now this part here is the neck. This is where the stick is going to fit in. And then you'll have your round rattle head. So the only thing I truly, truly miss about the workshops that are live with people there is because we have so much fun. We just joke and we cut up and it's actually better than group therapy. So let's get this one done, this next hole, and snug it up. And one thing, when you get to around to snugging up these stitches a little bit, you're going to need a little hand strength. So if you're weak in the hands, just be patient, take your time, do the best you can, because nothing is perfect. Nothing should be perfect because everything is unique, including us. 
So here we go. We got that right up to one side of the neck. Okay. I'm going to go around here a little bit. Get that next hole. And if you can't find the second half, just kind of split it open a little and search for it. See how I did there? I kind of split it open a little and search for that hole in the second piece. And if you miss a hole, it's okay. Just pull your sinew out and go back a little bit. It's not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. Now you see the difference in this rawhide? These were cut the same size with the same pattern, yet one stretched more than the other. But when they start to dry, everything shrinks together, especially when it is sewn together. And it all comes out just right. So let's get a little bit more of this done. The thing I think that takes the most time is packing the rattle with sand. And the reason we pack the rattle with sand as tightly as we can is because rawhide stretches, rawhide shrinks. So when you pack the rattle with sand, when it's wet, it stretches that rawhide out and it dries to the shape of however much sand you pack in it. And then you empty the sand out and you have this nice, beautiful, hollow rattle head that you can fill with your beads or your bells or your seeds or your beans or whatever sound you wish to have in your rattle because this is your rattle. And um, it's just a fun thing to do. And the reason I like doing things like this is because it takes your mind off of everything else. I don't know how many people will be watching this, but I know most of them that know me know that I'll love them watching it. And I'll love them learning something new, even if I'm not there to teach you. We can't let COVID get us down. No, we have to keep going. We have to be and do the things that make us happy as much as we can. And, um, and always be kind to each other and patient. And doing things like this actually teaches, teaches us some patience because we all need a little patience in this life right now. And I think doing things like this brings some extra beauty into the world because it helps us express ourselves. And some of us have a hard time doing that. You know, some of us just have a really tough time expressing ourselves. So We've got that going. Now see, you've got, I've got it stretched, stitched from here to here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a few more stitches, and then we will move on to the next step. And kind of get this going because the sand packing takes a while. And that's got to be done right got to be done as tight as you can pack it. But this is all fun to me. It's uh, a lot of fun to me. I love to create. I love to be creative because it gives me an outlet for feelings that sometimes can't be expressed any other way. And, um, and that, I guess that's one thing I enjoy about workshops. It's because it kind of takes us all the way from the real world for a little bit. And it gives us an escape. And it gives our bodies an escape. It gives our mind an escape. And it gives us a chance to be together 
with other people, they'd like to escape too. So a few more stitches and we're going to go to the next step here because I could do this for hours. All right, now I've just about got this halfway stitched and I'll open it up and show you how well that is. See there? Stitched nice and tight. There's the inside of the rawhide, there's the outside of the rawhide, and it's stitched nice and snug. Okay, so I'm going to put this back in the water so I can finish it later so it stays nice and soft and pliable so I can work with it. And we're going to take out the next piece that is already sewn together and has been partially filled with sand. So we'll put this one back in and pull this one out. Now this one that's already sewn has been partially stuffed with sand. And you can see the sand in there. And it's sewn all the way around. Now because I was running out of rawhide, I used this little pattern to make this head. And you can see all the stitches nice and snug down at the corner, down on this side where it's multiple stitches to hold it snug. Over here I got the long tail. And we'll get to the reason for the long tail soon. So we get our funnel. Funnel's really good, helps you out. And we're gonna open this up like that. They just squeeze it in your hand, open it up a little bit. I'm going to pop that funnel right in there. And I'll turn it this way. And you get your sand a little bit at a time. And you pour it in that funnel. Let it go down into the rattle. And when you get it to where you get a good bit up here, see it's all the way up to here now, the sand is. So we're going to pull the funnel out shake the sand off and we're going to get this stick it's a dowel just a dowel this one's probably a foot long and we stuff that dowel down in there hang on to this rattle and you start pushing that sand just pushing it in there and packing that sand and the stitches will expand the rattle will start to bow out and you can see where it's kind of fattening out a little bit from stuffing that sand down in there. Pack it good. If you can see, just pack it. See how that dowel is going down in there, packing that sand? Okay, now when you get all that packed in there pretty good, we're going to put the funnel back in and put some more sand in. All right, here we go. Let's get some more sand in there. See, you can see the rattle. There's the sand. It's going down in there. Yeah, shake it down in. And this sand is nice, white, clean sand. You can buy a cup of sand or something, probably at Hobby Lobby or someplace. This sand actually came from Lake Worth, Florida years ago. So I've had this same sand for probably going on 30 years. Because you can reuse your sand. Now, let's get the funnel out. Get that dowel down in there and stuff it. I don't know if you can see that it's going out any yet. But it's, it's getting there. Now this is gonna, this takes some strength. So just keep packing it. Pack it around the whole side of the rattle. And you're gonna get some sand in your hands, but hey, it's beach sand. Not a better place to be, but at the beach. So, all right, can you see where it's starting to expand? It's not flat anymore. Yeah, it's starting to take some shape. Okay, here we go. Let's get some more sand in there. Ah, yes, it's doing good. Starting to come up into the neck now. 
So pack it in. You want as much sand packed in there as you can get and make this rattle as fat as you can get it without ripping it. All right, so let's keep packing. I like to pack it all the way around. But we have ways to go yet. Okay. See, it's getting fatter and fatter. Can you tell? Yeah, it's getting fatter. Okay, let's get some more sand. I want to try to get this so you can see it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, squeeze it. Okay. Here we go. Let's pack some more. I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way so you can see this well. I like to pack it all the way as tight as I can and as fat as I can. And if you really like doing this, you'll wind up doing more than one. Now, one thing when you go to buy your rawhide, if you're selecting it in person, look at it. Make sure it doesn't have any holes in it. And make sure it's not too thin because if it's really, really thin, your rawhide, your rattle will tear apart. And you don't want it so thick that you can't work with it. So I'd say, you know, like a medium rawhide that's, that's nice and stiff when you buy it, but not so thick you can't cut it when it's wet. You want to be able to cut it when it's wet. Now, if you're really ambitious, you can cut it dry, but it takes a lot of hand strength. I've done both. I've cut dry and punched dry, and I have to tell you, it's much easier to do it when the rawhide is wet. But draw your pattern on the rawhide first if you're going to soak it in water to soften it because once the rawhide is wet it stretches in different shapes like you saw the other one that we lined up same pattern same size one just stretched out more than the other when it was soaked now when they dry they'll dry the same, but when they're sewn together, they do a little better. They kind of shrink together. So we're gonna use the spoon. We're getting down to the neck now. I'm gonna pack it a little more, because I like it nice and fat. I like fat head rattles. Shove it over around the edges. Get it over around the edges real good too. You want this good. Now one thing I've discovered with my rattles, unless they are crushed or get wet, they will last for many generations. Now you see how fat that's getting now? And we still have a little more room, a little more sand to pack in there because I want it as rounded as I can get it a little more all right kind of squeeze it down in there a little bit squeeze it down in there yeah squeeze it squeeze it pull that funnel out all right pack pack again all 
Oh, this is coming out really nice. Sometimes you really don't know what these things are gonna look like because wet rawhide isn't real predictable when it starts to dry. And let's get this going. All right. And you will have some mess. As you can see, I've got sand spilled here on the cloth, but it's okay. All right. You can see I'm packing and packing and packing. All right, let's get this thing done. Yes. And it seems to be nice and tight. Nice and tight. And it gets a little heavy too when it's packed like this. I want to pack it and pack it and pack it. All right. Okay, now I think we've got that packed enough. Shh, shh. So, we're going to put the stick in here, the handle. Now, your handle can be a dowel or a twig or a little piece of tree. Shh, be quiet. Or a little piece of tree, but you want to stick that right in the end there. Right in there, as far as you can get it. As far as you can get it. Now, the little tails that we have left here, we're going to wrap around this because as the rawhide dries around this handle, it shrinks to fit the handle perfectly. So we're going to wrap this around here. Wrap it, wrap it, wrap it. And pull it tight. Okay. And we're going to kind of tie it just in a loose knot so it stays put because this will take approximately anywhere from two to four days to dry completely. Now when you're checking your rattle to see if it's dry, if it's still cool, it's wet. It's dry when it is room temperature and it feels a little bit lighter and that's how you know and you can tell when it starts shrinking that it is dry now we're going to set this aside and we're going to bring over the one that i have finished and that is dry now this has a little limb off of a, an old drumstick now this one is dry and you can see where i've tied it around here so what we're going to do now is we're going to take the rattle, we're going to unwrap it like this from where the stick was put in. Now you notice that the stick fits perfectly. And we're going to pull the stick out. Okay, and let's trim this up a little bit. See all that? We don't need all that. We're going to trim it up. We'll leave about six inches for now. Set that aside. And we're going to loosen the stick and gently pull it out. Here we go. It's coming. It's a snug fit. There we go. There we go. And we're going to take our jar of sand and we're going to pour it out. sand out. Now you hear this rattle? It's completely dry. You want to tap all the sand out. See there? Look at that. Nice, dry, hollow in there. 
Now, once it dries, you'll see a few little gaps, perhaps, between some of the stitches. So what we'll do now is we're going to take a needle, or our awl, and we're going to go around and we're going to retighten some of these stitches. I like to use a needle. So I'm going to start with the end that's loose because over on this side we started and we went through this several times so that's permanent for now. So what we'll do is we're going to start here and we're going to start pulling and tightening these stitches. And you'll see when they start tightening, you can see, tighten them up. Uh, we're going to start here. All right, we're going to start at the end where it's permanent and we're going to tighten. All right, can you see there? See what I'm doing? I'm tightening. You see the looseness already that I'm bringing up? All right, and this will grow as we go around. All right, let's get under there. We'll tighten that. And now that we have a little more room, we can probably come in and use the awl. What you don't want to do is you don't want to cut this sinew. You don't want to break it. So, but you can see where the stitches are getting tighter. There we go. See the what we're bringing up here? So that's what's getting tightened. Okay. So we go all the way around this rattle. All the way around. Okay. All the way. Every stitch you want to tighten it up because that brings the rattle head pieces closer together so your beads or your seeds don't try to sneak out. Okay, we're getting, we're getting there. I see how this has gotten bigger as we've gone around? Okay. Alrighty. I love doing this stuff. Sometimes it's just so peaceful and kind of clears your head of things. It's nice to learn something new, especially something that you've never done before. And who knows, you may never do this again. But at least if you watch this video and you get these supplies, you will have done it once. And you can say, I made a rawhide rattle. So we're gonna go around we're moving along here pretty good. And um, I sure miss everybody not seeing them this year because for one thing, I'm a hugger. I love hugging my friends. I love seeing them. And one thing I really miss about my workshops, being there on the grounds, is that I have a lot of the same people in my workshops every year and it's like family and you know family sometimes friends can be more family than some family so see how this is getting bigger now so that's the excess that we have once this rawhide shrunk up and um, so we need to tighten that up. And um, you know, when this is done, I'm on Facebook. If anybody has any particular questions, they can always send me a message on Facebook. My email address is also on Facebook. So, and I'm sure if you can't reach me any other way, I'm sure that a message could get to me through the Native Rhythms Facebook page also. Okay, so we have more bigger, bigger. All right. 
right, we're almost at the end here. I get so anxious when I'm making a rawhide rattle because I want it done now. And with the rawhide, you can't rush it. You just can't rush rawhide. All right, we're almost at the end. Okay. Here we go. Now, we're going to put some beads down in here. Now, if it doesn't come out perfect, like right down here at the end where I kind of snagged it up and broke it, it's okay because this part of the handle will be covered. So we're going to twist that up, and when we put the handle inside, we're going to tuck in these ends. Now, I'm going to use some of these old, odd-shaped beads. because I like the sound of beads. Makes a nice sound. I think I like a few more. Like I said, you can put anything in your rattle that you want to. And here's some bigger ones if you want to put bigger ones in. You can put a few big ones in there. Nice. It's got a nice sound. So to finish this up, we have all of our stitches tightened. The head's nice and hard. There's room for the stick. So we tucked down, we tucked in the ends of the sinew, so they're inside of the rattle. And we're going to tuck this stick right in there and pop it back in. And there you have your rattle. It's ready to go. So now what I would do is I would wrap this with leather, whatever color leather you want, or put a piece of fur around it. You can wrap beads around it. You can do anything with this you want because it's your rattle. Now the stick goes all the way up into the head. So it's pretty sturdy and you can see right here, the stick stops there. The stick stops right here. And the beads are in there nice and snug. So you can paint it however you want. I have even used a wood burning tool to lightly burn some designs in. But all the stitches are nice and snug all the way around. And it's got a few grains of sand up here, but they will wipe off. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you make a rattle. And if you do make a rawhide rattle after you see this video, it would be really cool if you'd post it on your Facebook page or send me a copy of a photo of it because they're really a lot of fun to do. So I hope you learned something. I hope you had a good time. I know it wasn't our usual two hours that we spend joking and cutting up and doing something new every year but I will miss you all and hopefully next year we can all be together and I just hope you had a good time doing this so here we are here's this little one I was working on here's the completed one except for the decorating but the rattles made it's dry look it's even got some sand still coming out so those beads will knock the rest of the sand out too. So if you see a little sand coming out, it's okay. But um, happy rattle making and thank you for tuning in and I hope to see you all next year at 2021 Native Rhythms Festival at Wickham Park in Melbourne, Florida. Always the second weekend in November. Come look for me.
Bye.